Thank you for visiting my channel. I am the actuarial guy. Please make sure you subscribe in order to receive the latest videos from my channel. This is the third and final part of unit 2 which deals with the time value of money. Effective rates of interest and discount. Well, effective rates are simply compound rates that have interest paid once by unit time, either at the beginning of the period or at the end of the period. When the interest is paid at the end of the period, it is called effective interest. And if it is paid at the beginning of the period, it is called effective discount. This distinguishes them from nominal rates where interest is paid more frequently than once per unit time. In the case of nominal rates, you could have your interest paid every month, that is 12 times per year, or you could have it paid twice a year, maybe halfway through the year and then at the end of the year. So um, all you have to do is remember this difference between effective rates and nominal rates for now. Unit 3 will shed more light on both. Well, we can also show that compound and effective rates are equivalent. And if you're interested in learning how to do this, you can drop me an email and I'll do a special video just for you. So um, to help you understand uh, effective rates of interest, and in an investor will lend an amount 1 at time 0 in return for a payment of 1 plus i at time 1. We consider i to be the interest paid at the end of the year. So i is our effective rate of interest. Now in the case of effective rates of discount, we can think of compound discount as an investor lending an amount 1 minus D at time 0 in return for a repayment of 1 at time 1. The sum 1 minus D may be considered as a loan of 1 to be repaid at time 1 on which interest amount D is payable in advance. In other words, it's a loan of 1 received here but then since the person has to pay an interest amount of D when they receive the loan here, they're simply left with 1 minus D. Hence, it is 1 minus D at time 0 and at time 1, they repay an amount 1. Now, two rates of interest or discount are equivalent if for a given amount of principal invested for the same length of time, we receive the same accumulated value under each of the rates. Think of it this way. You have um, two different rates of interest. And for each of the rates, you invest an amount C for a period of n years. Let's say the same length of time. And if you end up with the same accumulated value at the end of the time, then these two rates are equivalent. Think of a rate that pays interest, say, twice a year. And think of a rate that pays interest once a year. If these two rates end up giving you the same accumulated value at the end of that year, it simply means these two rates are equivalent. We will look at this. Uh, we'll look at this in uh, unit three. Now we have already looked at two different methods of obtaining discounted present values of a payment, and one of the methods employed compound interest model, while the other one employed the compound discount model. Now, just to give you a quick flashback, we can remember that. Um, in the case of compound discount, if you suppose that an amount C is due after n years and a rate of compound discount of D per annum applies, then the sum of money required to be invested now to accumulate to C after n years is given by that. Well, 
in the other case of compound interest, we saw that if an amount C is due at time N, the amount that has to, invest, to be invested at time 0 is simply given by C uh, multiplied by nu raised to the power N, where our nu is equal to 1 over 1 plus I. Now, why am I telling you this? Uh, it's because I want us to compare these two formulae. We have this one and we have this one under the compound discount and under the compound interest. Now, these two formulae uh, give you an amount C at time N. If you want C at time N under the compound discount model, you have to invest this at time zero. If you want to get C at time N under the compound interest model, you have to invest this at time zero. Now the, period, the, the return at the end of the n years of time is the same and the amount of time, the length of investment is n, is the same in both cases. Now what if we assume that the amount invested at the beginning is also the same? In other words, we are saying that what if we assume that these two rates are equivalent? Then, if we compare these two formulae, we get that our new is equal to 1 minus d, where d is equal to 1 minus new. And if we work it down by um, substituting new for 1 over 1 plus i, we get that our d discount, uh, rate of discount is i times new, which is given by this. So, um, we need to recall that D is the interest paid at time zero on a loan of one, while I is the interest paid at time one on the same loan. Now, if the rates are equivalent, then if we discount I from time one to time zero, we will obtain D. So how do we discount I from time one to time zero? If you can remember what you did earlier, it's simply i divided by 1 plus i, right? Over one period of time. This discounts i back to time 0. This is also i into nu. i times nu, where nu is 1 over 1 plus i. Now, if you look at this, you find that it is the same as what we already have here. Interesting, isn't it? Now that is a way that we can reason out this, uh, this formula that we have here. And with that we have come to the end of Unit 2. Please subscribe to receive videos from Unit 3. Unit 3 is going to cover interest rates. Once again, thank you very much for visiting my channel. I am the Actuarial Guy.